Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spore the Warning podcast. This is review number 591 with a review of Onward. I'm Christopher Schnasey. And I'm Stephen Miller. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Spore the Warning podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week in the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest film releases coming to a theater near you. This week, we're talking about a few films. We just had a review of The Invisible Man. This is a review of Onward. We're going to have a review of Emma and then a review of The Way Back. Um, yeah. So since we're here talking about the latest Pixar film, one of the things that makes going to see a Pixar film great is that they often have shorts that air before the film. Um, this film, uh, Pixar's Onward, had a little short from The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Um, so my question for you, Stephen, is A, what did you think of the short? And B, what did you think of the fact that it was a Simpsons short and not a Pixar short? Yeah, so I'm going to answer the second one first because I had a weird moment was seeing the simpsons logo pop up of remembering the corporate shakeups that have happened over the last few years that would lead disney to be able to put a simpsons short before a pixar movie and i was like oh oh (laughs) i think i like this you think you like it i do so it's not unprecedented for a non-pixar thing to air before a uh, a pixar film because we Mm -hmm. had the debacle that was coco and the freaking 35 minute frozen yeah jesus christ um so it's not like it's never happened before but this is the first time that like a wildly different ip from the most recently acquired studio yeah which yeah, it, it just it felt so drastically out of place. Yeah, um, that it, it was kind of shocking in a almost confusing way. I will. I was happy about it just because I haven't I haven't partaken in the Simpsons in quite a while. I think conventional wisdom is that it hasn't been good for a very long time. So a short where I knew it was going to be time limited, and I knew it was the Simpsons having to do something that would be g or pg rated you know that would be pixar friendly yeah i I was just interested in what they would do and i think making it be following maggie is just great like it's the perfect amount of cute it's silent because it is a baby it's almost like a pixar movie about like an animal or another wordless creature like having a (laughs) you know she thinks she's people right like it kind of has a little (laughs) bit of that she's people it has a little bit of that still and yeah i thought it was it was light and whimsical, but I, I yeah. liked it. I, I I liked the gags, even ones you could call from a mile ahead, like the train gag. They still worked on me. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I still enjoyed it. So I, I thought it was nice. It, it was a nice change of pace to have a, a Simpsons short before this movie. Yeah, if, if I take my own questions in order, I, I thought the short was actually good. Like, once I got over the shock of seeing The Simpsons before a Pixar film, I, I, I actually thought it was a touching little fun story. It does end with a shot where I thought, dear God, get those kids off that track. <laughs> but I, I think in general, I liked what they did with that story. It was just still hard for me to watch. Not, I, I think the last Pixar film, there was no short at all. Is that true? I, what was the last Pixar film? I feel film? like recently... Was Toy Story 4? I feel like there was no mm. there was no short before Toy Story 4. I might be misremembering, but I, I think... Yeah. I think... I don't... I, I know none of the animated shorts that were nominated this year were before Pixar movies. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so it, it's... It, it still made me a little sad to not to get a new sort of sweet, touching Pixar film. Because they really... I mean, they are... They are really good at having just kind of memorable right. shorts before their things that, that are like a whole universe. I would have preferred themselves. like feast to this, right? The, yeah, those yeah. little really adorable ones, but I yeah. like this a hell of a lot more than the Olaf one. Yeah. So like I... a real Disney animation, like short that is not just another IP that is, yeah. is now been folded. Or paper in. man. Okay. I, I take yeah. it back now. If the <laughs> Simpsons is going to make fewer paper men exist in the world, then I would rather have the, the one-off shorts that the studios are doing rather than one IP that everyone knows already. Yeah, yeah. But I still, as someone who has not watched a Simpsons thing in probably 14 years, I, I was pretty happy to see them again. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of things that we may or may not be happy to see again, mm-hmm. how about we talk about this Pixar film, Stephen? Sure. All right. We're going to take a listen to the trailer for Onward, and then we are going to move onward into our review. Of old, the world was full of wonder and magic. But times change. I'm a mighty warrior. Morning, Mom. Hey, birthday boy. By the laws of yore, I must dub thee a man today. Kneel before me. That's okay. I have a gift from your dad. He just said 
to give you this when you were both over 16. <gasps> no way! It's a wizard staff. Dad was a wizard! What? Your dad was an accountant. This spell brings him back. For one whole day, Dad will be back. What? Back? Like back to life? That's not possible. It is with this. I'm gonna meet Dad. You look just like I remember. Yeah! You got a problem, Shane? <laughs> if it's adventure you seek, you've come to the right tavern. Oh, no. We might be out of gas. But it says we have a full tank. No, that doesn't work. Growth spell! We grow the can, and then the gas inside will grow with it. Elbows up. Quite a focus here. And you're... Oh, no. All right, so Onward is uh, the story of a family of, I guess they're elves. Yeah. Um, and basically, they live in a world that has once been filled with magic and mystery and adventures and all sorts of things. But now, technology has come in, and technology is so easy and so powerful that people have forgotten and stopped using magic because it's easier to flip a light switch than it is to cast an illumination spell. Right. Um, and in this world where people have now passed off or cast off magic, pun intended, I guess, mm -hmm. um, and now they're just using technology, a young boy is turning 16, and as his 16th birthday is given a gift from his late father, uh, which happens to be a staff accompanied by a spell, which will bring him back for one day. These kids uh, perform the spell, and then uh, the spell only works halfway, and they have to go on an adventure to try to complete the spell before the sundown of the next day so that they can spend at least a short amount of time with their father before he disappears forever. Yeah. Whew. All right. So Stephen Miller... What did you think of Onward? So as is the case with almost every new Pixar movie, when I saw the trailer for this, I was kind of very turned off. <laughs> I, I just thought the it, it's bad to use this as a pejorative because they've made so many good movies, but I thought, is this a DreamWorks film, right? Yeah. Like, is, well, so the original teaser was like... Uh, Pegasuses, Pegasi, uh, Pegasies? I don't know. Pe sure. Pegapodes. Pega um, Pegasi. <laughs> so it was Pegasies eating out of a trash can and then two boys getting in like a metal yeah. out van and riding off to go on an adventure. Yeah. It was not promising. <laughs> right. It, it feels extremely like we are going to do, we're going to capitalize on Shrek for the 8 billionth time <laughs> and do a thing that is just going to be making fun of some idea with a ton of pop culture references thrown in. That, yeah. that was what I assumed was going to happen. And I was pleasantly surprised when I actually watched this movie, which is not to say that I think the premise is perfect. Like, I would not rank this among the best of Pixar films, but I think it is solidly in the middle, at least, where this is a movie that it is taking some very pure, simple ideas about family, about coming of age. I think... If I'm not mistaken, is this the only Pixar movie about like high school age characters? I feel like I haven't seen them treat that sort of emotion before. Yeah, um, I think so. So like they're they're taking uh, Monsters Inc. I feel oh, uh, Monst oh, Monsters University is just after high school. Yeah, but it's okay. a bunch of freshmen that are going in. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh okay. I'll get, it, it's still relatively fresh in the Pixar universe yeah, to, yeah. to tackle these feelings, and I think for how convoluted the plot sounds when you try to say explain it to your girlfriend later that night when you come home 
<laughs> or how it looks in the trailer. I think this is actually a pretty simple story that mostly nails the emotional beats that it wants to nail. And I think it the the comedy works. I think it isn't overly convoluted. I think the moments land where they need to land and it kind of it excuses itself for being a little complicated because it is kind of about the the love of fantasy and imagination and the love of the overly complicated quest right the it it is kind of about the things that i think would normally make it a flaw of a pixar movie um and it 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 worked on me really well i think mainly because tom holland and chris pratt i think just work really really great here yeah as always in pixar all the voice acting is fantastic like i loved um Julia Louis-Dreyfus as the mother, Octavia Spencer as the manticore, um, Mel Rodriguez, I think is his name, as Officer Colt Bronco, who <laughs> I, I, I was doing his whinnying voice before this. Um, you know, they, they, they always just nail that. But I think this is a sweet movie about a thing Pixar hasn't really talked about before, which is like the kid who grows up not really knowing where they belong, but generally doing well, but just not really having a guiding principle. And it is about finding the finding the thing that makes you tick, finding the thing that makes you you. And I think yeah. it, there's some really good emotions toward the end of this movie in particular that I thought, even if you could see them coming from a mile away, they just worked on me totally well. I felt like, damn it, Pixar, you did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I again I would not put this among the best of Pixar movies, but I'd put it firmly above, say, Cars or Brave or Toy Story Four, I'm gonna say. Like a lot of movies that have kind of outworn their welcome. I think this is still simpler and purer than that. And it has a lot of fun and a lot of comedy to it too. So I the, for the most part I was very on board for this movie, even though I think it is a little bit like second tier Pixar level. So I think when Pixar first got started, they were telling us, like, there, there was a rule that I used to govern whether I would consider a thing a Pixar film, right? It was like, it has to be, what if there is a fantastical world which exists in our present reality and exists to us, but we are unaware of it? And, and it, so Bugs Life, um, Toy Story, yep. like Monsters, Inc., like, what if... The fear that children have of monsters is there because there is a whole society of monsters who have a power system that runs up the screams of children. Like, oh, freaking brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. There are all these stories they're telling which take place in our reality and and are just beyond our, our vision, like things that are happening when we're not watching. And I love that formula of Pixar movies have to exist in that. But, you know, they have started to exhaust that. Like right. when they get to the point of what if cars were alive, yeah. we're at a problem, right? That, or even ones you love, like Up or Wally, right? They still don't really do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. They start to shy away from that. But, mm -hmm. I, but I think that Pixar has had to learn to grow and learn to be um, a different person if i can call it like a comp like a a, a a story putting forth entity they need to grow and expand and i think as you said walking into this film it was hard to fully grasp it as as something that could be good when it was just like we're telling a fantasy story and there's elves and goblins and horse people like that did not excite me mm -hmm. once the first trailer came out when i was like oh okay now it's a story about these kids trying to bring back their father and then having to be forced into a, an adventure in order to try to fix this weird situation they had, I, I started to become optimistic for it. Um, so going into it, when I sat down, I was kind of excited to see this film. Yeah. And, drum roll please, I love this movie. Oh, great. I love this. This movie is so good. <laughs> I, I, I think that this film is everything that it needed to be to hit me square exactly where it needed to to make me enjoy the hell out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was funny. I loved this. I mean, as somebody who's grown up playing like Dungeons and Dragons and I, things so like I that. I texted Julius right before <laughs> you guys left for the movie. And I said, like, watch the movie thinking Chris is Barley. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see him watch you laugh and see if you would like resonate with the character. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's so. OK, so another film that we praised was it last year? Uh, recently, uh, was a little film in the DC universe called Shazam. Mm -hmm. And in that story, there is a character who is primed to be able to get powers because they know about that world. And there is a character who 
is the one who gets the powers. Good comp. And, yeah. and and that sort of, <laughs> that sort of relationship between those two um, played really well in Shazam. Um, but there was also an adversarial relationship that was built into the Shazam story because one of the characters was jealous. This takes a similar approach where you have the older brother who's played their versions of Dungeons and Dragons and it, it knows it front to back. He's the DM for his his um, you know adventuring group, and uh, he is just so invested in it that he would be the one who would be excited about having magic ability. And then when the kid who's completely uninterested in that sort of thing gets it, there's no adversarial relationship. Right. There is a level of excitement where he's like, "Oh my god, my little brother." Who has, who has never wanted to play this game with me is now forced to do it and I can help him right. and we can work together to create these amazing powers and the ability to do like, oh, I just love so much this like the their version of going and it wasn't like they don't have the 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 trope of this situation now, which is pause the movie so these two characters can get a video camera and try out all the powers. They learn on the mm -hmm. go. As situations come out, the brother solves the problem with an idea of a spell, and then the one who has the staff tries to do that spell. And I think that that sort of progression through the advancement of the, of, of the story was just brilliant. And I think that, obviously, the shy little kid who's, like, scared to be out in the world, who's, like, slowly having to put himself in the situations to learn how to do stuff, worked on me as well. Um, yeah. And then on top of all of this, you have this, like, amazing story of what it means to um, have a parental figure and grow up and the things that you think you want versus have um, that story. And just um, that story just like hit me in all the heart feels and strings or whatever, like so good. Like mm -hmm. I just, I, I really love the story that this film is, is, is taking. And like, I cried like 10 times in this movie, like so yeah. much the whole movie. Cause so everything was, it was throughout great. the movie or toward the end. Cause for me, all the teary moments were at the very end when I could tell what they were doing with the two characters and what kind of message they were trying to convey. I, so I was already on like, so you see it in the trailer. Have you seen the trailers? When they first attempt the spell that brings the father back, um, they just manifest the bottom half of his body. And it's just these sentient legs with no ability to hear or speak or communicate or do it. And, and there is a thing that they do which ties back to the childhood of the older brother. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, ugh, like even that made me tear up because it was, just, it was, it was like it was, a double, it was a double whammy for me. It was like... It, it was A, like, this is so touching and sweet, and B, it was like, this is fucking brilliant. Yeah. And it was like, it hit me so well because it was just, it, it, it was, this is a very silly premise that could just be a dumb comedy buddy ride-along thing, but it is so filled with these moments of of grandeur and, like, heartfelt moments of what it means to... Um, be a kid and have a figure that you can look up to and stuff. And so the way they tie that back throughout the entire film just worked great to me. And on top of that, it's funny. And on top of that, I like get these jokes and allusions to these fantasy worlds and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I, I just like, j so this, this film opens with an exposition dump, which is the equivalent in theory of the exposition dump at the beginning of how to train your dragon. I was going to say that it is very how to train a yeah. dragon in the formula. It's like, including this... knowing it's a bookend that will end the film also. Yeah. yeah. And it like, it starts off and it's like, this is Burke. This yep. is the, like a long time ago, there were dragons and blah, 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 blah. And this, this starts that same story, but the amount of world building that happens in this little introduction, I was like, Oh fuck. I love this universe. Like mm -hmm. just this idea that everyone had magic and then some fucking asshole invented electricity, and then everybody was like, well, why should I fucking cast spells when I can just flip a switch? And, like, everybody gave up this power that they have. And, like, it, there, there are a lot of stories about worlds of magic that have died, and it's, it's mostly because people feared magic, and they banished it, and they, they – uh, some force didn't want magic users to rise above them, so they uh, went out and killed magic users or did these things, you know, like – in the Star Wars universe, they're trying to take out the Jedi. Like mm -hmm. there are, there are all sorts of fantasy worlds in which an oppressive force kills off magic or some sort of ability that people have. Yeah. And in this story, we willingly give it up. It's like a touch of idiocracy, right? Mm -hmm. like, where it's like, we're so consumed with like the silly television that we stop 
doing all the things that made society great. And I, I really love that we get that in 45 seconds at the beginning of this film, and it sets up everything we need for this world where these kids rediscover magic. Yeah. And, yeah, and then I, they compound on it with characters like the Manticore, and they make it more like directly clear how it was even kind of recent that magic was lost yeah, in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. For me, what really worked, so I, I liked the idea, the premise. I, I admit the 45 seconds was not enough for me yet. I was still like, okay, I see you. You've thought this through at least. I'm... I'm optimistic now, but I'm still not that into the world. Yeah. And it was really when it became about the the relationship between the brothers. I think yeah, that yeah. is the core dynamic of the movie. I think Chris Pratt in particular does such a good job of being the... He's the lovable screw-up who is redeemed by the fact that he is completely selfless. He's not selfless, but he's very... His joy is sharing things with other people. And in particular, yeah. he gets real joy from watching his younger brother succeed. And I think yeah, yeah. that character was just so moving to me as this guy that you like you want to see as a like burnout or a screw up or something, but then he's just so like exuberant in the way he handles things. And there's no moment in the movie where he was angry for more than like two minutes. Like th this is not a movie about two vindictive people or two yeah. people who are jealous of each other. It is a movie about one guy who truly wants what is best for his brother. And that's yeah. why the, the emotional place this movie goes worked so well for me because I so loved the character of Barley throughout the yeah, whole yeah. film, just watching him. And I do think even though it, it brings up a lot of separate magical things. Like, you know, it is a quest. There are different levels and stuff they have to capture. But everyone ties back somehow to a a thing that Ian is learning about himself, that Barley is helping coax out of him, right? Yeah. Some some core metaphor for growing up, like some thing that is really crucial to his identity. And I thought it, it was just lovely. It was like they took, they took a convoluted premise and said, like, we're going to take this and now mine it for simple 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 and it's going to work right we're we're going to trace all of these complicated things but what you're going to feel is a very simple emotional arc of what our character is going through and yeah. i i really respected that i thought that was really nice yeah i think that it, it is kind of amazing how many levels this film is working with like mm -hmm. it's not just a single parent story it's not just a uh mom's new boyfriend story it's not just a brother story it's not just a like uh never had a father story it's not just all these things it's not just a uh little scared high schooler mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to make friends sort of story it's not just about self-actualization it's all of these at once and it never none of those ever fail like right. it's it's doing so much more than a kid's film should or maybe needs to do but it's executing on every single one of those yeah. in in a way that just it felt so brilliant. Like it, it's I I don't know how much of this stuff will be something that kids understand when they watch it, but when kids go back and rewatch this when they're a little older, it's gonna have like an even deeper resonance with them because right. they'll realize like oh shit like that's oh man this is not just like a funny movie about these two guys who are being goofy like this that, is like i, I mean with, with every pixar movie there's the conversation about how adults might get more out of it than the yeah. kids would but this one especially the age group of the main characters and the themes it's wrestling with i kind of think if not adults at least teenagers or middle schoolers or something will get more out of it than a younger person will i, yeah. I feel like this is actually tailored to that demographic which i thought was very interesting and moving and it made it be a kind of invigorating new take on pixar even if it is returning to some similar wells of like a a person in need of a parent figure or a person trying to find their confidence you know but they like you said it ties it all together into the kind of complexity of growing up that i thought was really really nicely done yeah yeah i do like to and this is coming from an outsider, someone who has not played dungeons and dragons who is not in the world that the film was talking about i feel like if Freaks and Geeks and other things that have tackled Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> are any indication, a thing that people love about that kind of role-playing fantasy life is that it, the focus isn't on the individual or on individual pride. It's about building a thing together. Yeah, it's about yeah. like it's about how the group comp like 
yeah. helps accentuate all the abilities that yeah, each person and, has. And finding real joy in how the group interacts with each other and finding it a, like, it's us winning, you know? It's us together creating yeah, yeah. this thing. And I think this movie is that. Like, the, this movie becomes a kind of infectious thing where at the beginning only Barley is excited. Ian slowly warms up to it. The audience, I think, kind of warms up to it too over time as it goes on. Like, by the... I'm not going to spoil the ending, but there, yeah. there we'll, are we'll, routes. We'll, we'll do a spoiler yeah. section because there's some things that yep. definitely worth talking about. So, cl- some clever stuff they do there, too, where by the end, I think the whole audience is on board for the quest, quest, quest idea in a way yeah, that I yeah. thought was really good. Um, I really I won't talk about them until spoilers, but I really enjoyed the bridge scene. I think that goes some really good yeah, yeah. bait and switch places. Um, and there's a moment that I'm going to call the polyjuice potion moment of this movie. <laughs> so good. Really, again, so good. Oh clever my God. way also of mining this kind of fraternal conflict for something powerful. And again, showing how no one is an asshole here. No one behaves in a way that is rude or mean to the other people. It really is about like at the core, what do they believe and how is the way they grew up shaping what they believe? Yeah. And, I, and, and what... What hurts more, what somebody says or what somebody doesn't say? Exactly, yeah, yeah. which I, I think is just really, really, really clever. So, yeah. yeah. O- overall, again, not my favorite, favoritist of Pixar movies, but still, it, it put a big smile on my face, and I was totally happy when I saw this one. Yeah, me as well. Um, so, should we do verdicts before we get on to spoilers? Yep. All right, Stephen Miller, if you're going to give this a must-see, recommend with a caveat, wait for rental, pass with a caveat, or a must-avoid, what would you give it? I'm going recommend with a caveat now, confident that you will give it a must see. <laughs> I again that there must were, avoid. <laughs> there were moments of this movie that I loved. There are still enough moments that I feel it was a little more convoluted than it needed to be. It had maybe too many ideas it was going with at the same time. So very happy with it. But on the Pixar curve, I have to bump it down a little bit because it does not have the simple joy that some of the better Pixar movies have. Cool. Well, um, you're entitled to your incorrect opinions. <laughs> um, no, I kid, I kid, I kid. I, I love this film. Um, I I was so happy to have seen it. Uh, my girlfriend didn't want to see it with me. And I texted her as soon as it was over. I was like, it was so, so good. You messed up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I it's a must see for me. I absolutely loved it. I, I just everything about it, I thought was really joyous. And uh I will be happy to watch it again um, as soon as I can. (laughs) All right. So uh, for those who don't want spoilers, we're going to close out the episode right now. For everybody else, please stick with us until the spoiler segment. But for now, Stephen Miller, if people want to find you throughout the week, where can they do that? People can find me at twitter.com slash sdavidmiller or sdavidmiller.com. People can find me at ChristopherInRealLife.com or Twitter.com slash ChristopherIRL. You can find the podcast over at TheSpoilerWarning.com where you can get a bunch of the back episodes of the show. If you want to subscribe to the show, you can do so on Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are found. If you want to know when the episodes go live, you can follow us at Twitter.com slash SpoilerWarning, Facebook.com slash TheSpoilerWarning, or Instagram.com slash TheSpoilerWarning. If you want to get a hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at TheSpoilerWarning.com, or you can use the contact form on our site. Music for this episode will come from the soundtrack to Onward, so hopefully you are enjoying that. Um, Yeah, that music is going to play. It's going to fade up. And then when that music fades back down, we're going to be in full-blown spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, go watch it, come back, and listen to our spoiler conversation. All right, so we are back. This is Spoiler Territory. It's the after part of a review of Onward. We are here to talk about full-blown spoilers for this film. There probably isn't too much stuff to talk about, but there's definitely some big plot beats that we might want to talk about. The feels that we felt and the uh, excitement that we excited. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, is, is there... Um, is there anything you want to talk about in the earlier stages before we get sort of towards the main things in the end? I'm trying to think, because I do think the movie hits its stride a little bit later on i think for the first third i was totally happy but i didn't have anything that really blew me away yet so is it like right about the time they arrive at the manticore's tavern that they start to like pick up things is that about yeah i I think it's during the manticore scene is where i started to feel how the movie was going to unfold and get more and more excited about it yeah Yeah. so so i don't know nothing too early for me what about you um yeah i I think that we've we've already referenced it before but i think it's kind of 
it's it's another thing to hit on just to talk about a thing that I really really liked is just this idea that the the brother who is the one who would be so excited to receive this staff and be able to start doing like he's the one who's like holy shit magic's real oh my god I love it and he wants to use it he can't even though he's like a lot of the spells that we learn later on in the film require you to like say it from your heart and like really feel the thing you're trying to do and he has that in spades he should by all accounts if magic isn't everyone be able to cast any spell he wants because he has that much vigor and that much excitement but it's really the timid younger brother who just by the nature of whatever genes were passed to him mm-hmm. has the magic in his ability and he's the one like the the, the fact that they spend hours trying to cast the spell and the brother finally gives up and the mom leaves and he's just sort of in his room and just offhandedly starts to read this thing and the spell starts to work i i, I really i mean we know from the trailer that he's the one that cast the spell but i i, I right. liked i liked that interaction of of him him being able to make it happen and then when his brother opens the door and just sees everything going crazy he's not mad or jealous he's just like fuck yeah, yeah. my brother can do magic yeah and i think is there anyone better than chris pratt to play that oh, kind of character but, it's like the perfect marriage both, of voice actor and character both characters are perfect like right. i think tom holland as the little like mousy kid and chris pratt as his older brother are just like oh my god like how did somebody when they were working on this film not go like we want like a chris pratt type <laughs> for the brother and then maybe a Tom Holland kind of guy for the wait, we can get them, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it just it feels like a match made in heaven. Like it was so I couldn't imagine anybody else in those roles and have it work that well. Yeah. So Yeah, I, I agree. I, I I really liked that moment. I, I did especially like, as you point out, the fact that Barley, there's not a moment where he is angry about it or resentful. Yeah. He's just immediately like, Awesome, my brother can do magic. Yeah. And and I think that's what makes the later conflict where as uh, the scene you call the apologies potion yeah. scene where um because to maintain the illusion this mimicry spell they're doing um you cannot tell a lie it, it starts off as a fun gag of how can a person pretend to be a person but not lie yeah. in pretending to be that person that was fun and then when it becomes this like we're all done we're safe we made it yeah, but what about that fuck up brother of yours? Yeah. And then having him ha- like have to let loose this like like show the sign that he does believe his brother is like a screw up like that. Like that hits so much harder because there has been nothing but joy in that relationship, no animosity there. And then when that comes out, it's like, oh, it's just yeah, it's and so it's, devastating. And, and like you say that the question is, would it have been you, you would think in most versions of this movie he lies and says or, or no no he says the truth he says yeah yeah he is kind of a fuck up and then he doesn't vanish yeah, yeah. and then the brother points out later like why didn't you disappear yeah, were yeah. you not lying there but here he tries to do the nice thing and the fact that his niceness is hiding this actual deep feeling yeah, he yeah. has that his brother hasn't succeeded that his brother hasn't done what he should do like it, it felt very real, yeah. like like what you would feel if you were in that situation of this like older brother that you know is kind of embarrassing, but you love also. And yeah. the asymmetry, too, of their love where he is so happy for everything about his younger brother's life, but then Ian can't feel that in return. Yeah, and the yeah. fact that he's younger and he's passing that judgment, it just – all of those dynamics work so well for this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially because, I mean, it also keys into a – huge reveal which is another devastating reveal in this field which which i think kids just won't understand until they're much older but later on it is revealed that the reason he is this screw up kid is because he made the mistake of not going to see his dad when he was on his deathbed and then his dad passes away before he has a chance to say goodbye Mm -hmm. and that has basically sent him on this like i've decided that i'll never not do something again like i'll always try to have fun and go do things because I this one thing has haunted me ever since this moment. And it's like when that reveal plays back and you realize that he is like this because he's rebelling against this f- stupid mistake that he made, which he still can't live down. Like it just, oh, yeah. it just, everything works in this movie. Yep. <laughs> Re- really, really good. Again, like simple character motivations, even in a complicated story. Yeah. And speaking of complicated stories. So the part that I was hinting at before is there is, 
a moment after the bridge where they see the ravens pointing and they both kind of realize, oh my God, we are on a quest where we need to follow this clue. Yeah, yeah. And from there, they go through this kind of complicated maze of Indiana Jones type of traps that they have to get through and a water tunnel and moving in all these different directions. And it feels like the movie is pushing in just toward the finish line. Yeah, yeah. And then they have that amazing twist at the end where they're back where they begin yeah they pull up the manhole or they pull up the rock cover and yeah. it turns out to be the manhole in front of the school at which they started their quest exactly and i feel like in a lot of these movies that would be true they're back where they begin and then they would realize the, the was adventure the was here time. all along yeah. the thing was here. <laughs> but no it, a piece that they had to pick up from that original location fits to make it work in yeah. the end and it, and it ties it back to the friggin the brothers obsessed with the history of magic it, exactly and it, like gets in trouble with the the things because he's trying to tree hug and chain himself to old uh like obelisks and things so they don't get destroyed oh yeah love it so much it yeah was like so his, good. his brother becomes a a crucial part of why this works and i yeah. think it it all ties together so well it just it checks every box and then you might want to talk about other moments but i have to blow the one now where he realizes that his brother has been the dad figure in his yeah. life this whole time Everything he checks off that he wanted to do with his dad, his brother did. And in particular, the the scenes of his brother encouraging him, like helping him ride a bike, helping yeah, him learn yeah. how to do things, paired with the whole film where we've seen that kind of like exuberant, selfless, like let me help make you better energy yeah, from his yeah. brother. I loved that moment yeah, so much. It was much. so good. And then I, like yeah. the doubling down on it of like him deciding – because the brother was his father figure, mm -hmm. that the brother can now have the chance to go on and meet the father, given the circumstances. So that good. We're, oh, my God. So good. One, it of, was one of the better endings in any Pixar movie, I think. Like, Because it just... It, it just felt right. It, it felt yeah, so yeah. good, and it's one chance for him to give his brother what his brother has given him. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's a good counterbalance to the Polyjuice Potion scene before, because what he had believed... My brother is a failure. Now he sees my brother taught me everything I know. Yeah, yeah. Let me help him back. Just just so good. Just yeah. good, good, good writing, good execution. I, I love that moment. Definitely something got in my eye during that scene. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> when I met back up with my girlfriend after having seen the film, I was recounting beat by beat the story. And just all these beats made me cry again yeah. as I was trying to tell the story. So, yeah, it was good. Definitely, definitely uh, loved everything <laughs> the film was doing. I did for a second start because you, you talked about the whole like in a normal story, we'd arrive where we were and then we'd realize that the thing was inside us the whole time. I did for a split second think that when the brother sacrifices his car and all that's left left is like the, the turn signal on the car. I was like, that turn signal looks a lot like this, the, the Phoenix gem. Oh. And I thought for sure that it was going to turn out that like his sacrifice of his van would be the rising of the phoenix and that the tail light would act as the gem and allow them mm -hmm. to cast the spell but then it's even better yeah there's the payoff it's, still it's a literal throwaway gag <laughs> which yep. is he distracts the dragon that's manifested as the curse from the phoenix gem by throwing the tail light yeah. to make the dragon go off of it oh so good <laughs> it is interesting too how um i know this is a pixar movie but real life doesn't apply here in the sense of the behavior of the manticore and the mom in this movie yeah. when they see this giant dragon that is going to destroy everything the lengths they will go to still let the kids see their father for a minute yeah. it it's really sweet in a very kind of playful cartoony way that they maybe it, it fits a world where magic existed that the stakes even when they are deadly don't feel as high as they yeah. normally would have but they they also discover that the like they discover they also have already pre-established that the mom's kind of a badass like mm -hmm. there's definitely like the the older brother's roughhousing with her and she like flips him onto the ground yeah it's like yeah mom's got the moves or whatever right so it's like it's already pre-established plus she's she, she even uses her like jazzer size moves like the she's doing like the i don't know what the slide move is but where you slide to two sides of the slippery pad and she uses that to scale the dragon during yep. that fight yeah it's just 
Like, there is a lot of work that went into doing the stupidest of gags in this movie, yeah. and that make that turns them from being just a silly cartoon gag to being, like, a really smart callback. So. Yeah. Speaking of gags, I'm going to say everything about the Pixies on the highway scene worked so well. Yeah. It was this great kind of silly Mad Max type of situation where yeah, yeah. more formations are coming at them and they have to find different ways to get rid of them. Just I, to... I do like also the, the miniaturized brother trying to like dungeon master explain why the pixies can't fly anymore. <laughs> it's just so good. Yep. Uh, good movie. Yeah. I'm glad great. you liked it. Would you like to change your review to must see? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I just can't. I can't. I'm, I'm sticking with it. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's, it's a pretty... It's a brilliant, yeah, it's a pretty brilliant film, and I, I, I just had so much fun with it, and like, went on the full emotional roller coaster the whole time. It's pretty great. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's probably going to do it for this review of the film. So we are going to take off and record a little review of a film called Emma. Long ago, the world was full of wonder. It was adventurous. There was magic. But it wasn't easy to master. So the world found a simpler way to get by. But I hope there's a little magic left in you.